And speaking of our artists, very, very shortly, we're about to be joined by none other than Mikhail Mulipola for an incredible masterclass on how to draw heroes. So let me give you a really brief introduction to this absolute titan of the industry. Uh, Mikhail is a Samoan comic book artist who has several big passions in life, comics, pro wrestling, teaching, and when he gets the chance, he likes to combine all of those together. His works often combine Pacifica wrestling heroes and recent historical heroes. And as anyone who has been lucky enough to attend one of his previous events can tell you, he is an ebullient, engrossing, engaging, and just fabulously fun presence to be in. Um, Mikhail is self-taught. He's from Auckland, New Zealand, um, and he immersed himself in the world of comic books from the tender age of five, and um, he's wanted to draw comics from that moment on. When he's not drawing comics, he describes himself as a semi-competent Tekken player, having made the top 12% at EVO in 2018, and being the winner of the Zowie BenQ EVO 2018 Tekken 7 ladder tournament. Now that is quite the achievement. And he's currently a member of the HP Omen squad. He can also be found peddling comic books at Arkham City Comics, a comic book store that he helped a friend establish. During the weekends, he likes to spend time dropping people on their heads as a pro wrestler for Impact Pro Wrestling. Check him out online. And he's also a proud Duffy Books and Homes role model. He's shared his work and his story at many schools around New Zealand, doing heaps of visits. And he is just such an incredibly inspirational presence. So I think we have Mikhail on the line. Are you there, Mikhail? What's up? Thank you very much for the... Uh... The introduction and I, I apologize to Kay for <laughs> accidentally uh uh gate crashing um the 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 QA session. I just kinda didn't realize I would go straight to the um to the to the main kind of stream. So yeah, no, thank you for having me. It's a it's a shame that I'm stuck in Auckland. Uh and, you know, any excuse for me to go down to Wellington I'll take, but uh it is what it is. Um well, so, it's yeah. just fabulous to have you. So um, I think Joseph and I will sign off now and we'll leave the rest in your capable hands. Welcome to the stage. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll get started. Uh, let me just share my screen. Cool. Uh, so yeah, I guess we're drawing superheroes, and you know, kids love superheroes. I love superheroes, as you can tell by my by my action figure collection. Um, I forgot to also mention uh, that's a pretty cool Devastator that's uh, that's on display there at the at the at the library set. Um, so yeah, so you know, when superheroes, you know, a lot of people think about you know. Um, the big muscles and 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 and, and what then so i'm gonna i'm gonna like in this time i'm gonna try and draw a, a male and female um superhero um but you know superheroes you know like with the action and and whatnot with, especially with comic books there's a lot of uh dynamics uh in play and, and usually when i'm drawing i usually like the way i i, I draw something um, I always break it down into simple shapes because it's always easier to digest uh, and understand what it is I'm drawing if I can just break it down into shapes. Also, it helps me kind of plan out where everything is going to go um, before. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, just starting off with. Some rough construction lines. Trying to get everything going understand where what do I think if there's going to be any uh, what kind of do I make up a superhero? I don't know. I'm not too sure that it's time for me to make up a superhero. So if anyone has any suggestions of which superhero I should be doing, um, let me know. So yeah, so if you know if 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 you if you want to get better at you know drawing people, humans and stuff, I do suggest you know, looking at, at uh, photos for reference, you know, taking a look at 
how certain muscle groups if you have action figures like i do if you um you can use them for reference like this this little guy i've got here he can you know pose and rip off his arm um and like and then that kind of helps you get an understanding of of movement and whatnot um you know i also have let me just censor this one um i also have this uh, anatomy model as well to kind of help me figure out musculature and and all kinds of things so it's not like i just draw things you know um without observation and studying you know that's part and parcel of of being an artist is is that those skills in drawing kind of like what you see and in, in like understanding it a little bit better So we're just doing a just doing a, a fairly generic kind of superhero piece here. Um you can see how the shapes kind of help determine how things will look before I even get to the the fun detail stuff. If you're wondering, I'm using a program called Clip Studio Paint. Uh, this is the PC version, but you can get a version of an iPad. Um, it's been my go-to um, drawing software for <laughs> 15 years now. I've been using Clip Studio Paint or Manga Studio back when it was um, in 2007. So it's what I kind of know. I know there's other, um, you know, other, other, other apps and software. Like, you know, if you use an iPad, there's obviously Pro Procreate, which is a also another great kind of drawing um software um which is by developers in tasmania so you know um Actually, maybe I'll make this person. I'm going to turn this into Moon Knight.
I'm just kind of going off what I remember. If I if I if I had um planned to draw Moon Knight, I probably would have put up um would have grabbed some um reference images so I can draw the costume properly. But I'm making it up as I go, uh, which is part of the fun of being an artist as well as being creating as a creative. How's it going, Sam? <laughs> Hey, Mikhail, how's it going? Yeah, not bad. Just... We've got a few questions coming through. Are you able to answer and yeah, draw it? Ahead. Sweet. Can you tell us about, oh, actually, before I do that, I'm just going to wish um, Sammy's daughter, Layla, a very happy birthday. They're watching on the live stream and she's 12 today. So congratulations on turning 12. That's amazing. Oh, awesome. Happy birthday. I was wondering, Mikhail, if you could tell us about any comics or manga that particularly inspired you. Obviously, Moon Knight. Uh, the what that inspired inspired me in general, or just like for this piece. Uh, I reckon in general. Let's start with in general, and then we'll talk about this piece that you're working on at the moment. Yeah. So, for uh, like for me, like in, in sort of inspiration, uh, just comics in general have always been my inspiration. Um, you know, I just absolutely loved the medium as a kid, and I just grabbed my hands on anything and everything really that was. Um, and so for me, it was just comics, the medium. But like in terms of like characters, and whatnot, um, Green Lantern uh, over here. Um, it was also, you know, R.I.P. Neil Adams. That's a uh, that's the uh, hard traveling heroes Green Lantern, Green Arrow as well on display there. Um, so yeah green lantern for me is is one of those those books now obviously x-men uh you can't see it let me just flip this up you can see x-men just at the top there um my extra x-men extra figures at the top um so yeah so you know very much just but in general for me it's just comics in general that just really inspires me to kind of do what i do um so yeah um Hopefully that's... What is it about um, Green Lantern in particular that inspires you? Uh, so, you know, w uh, when I was a kid, you know, I collected um, these figures here. Uh, superpowers. Uh, action figures as a kid. And Green Lantern um, was the one that really stood out to me because unlike Batman and Superman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Lantern didn't have any primary colours uh colors on this because he kind of stood out and so like you know to me he looked cool because he was different from the rest but as i grew older and i started reading more green lantern stories i realized that i had the, the connection to the character because green lantern's powers are very artistic in his very nature so i i, I kind of see myself as green lantern in terms of brutal life you know constructs through my artwork as, as an artist and stuff so yeah i'm very uh very much you know like um green lantern is, is, is kind of why he's that's why he's kind of my favorite superhero awesome yeah it's that creative element it's a shame that the uh movies weren't super great um yeah. but uh, there's a there's a i'm looking forward to the new animated film which is um oh. green lantern be aware my power which uh is um centered on john stewart being the new Green Lantern and stuff, and so can so I'm looking forward to that. Oh, nice. Um, I see that you're doing Moon Knight here. Um, we've got a question from the audience saying, "What did you think of the Moon Knight TV show?" Minus spoilers. Um, and if you could draw an existing comic series, what would it be? Um, oh, I I really enjoyed the the Moon Knight uh, TV series. That first episode of Moon Knight for me has been the strongest. Um first episode of any of the Marvel uh, television series. Um, and so I, I really enjoyed how they approached Moon Knight. Obviously, it's not like, you know, one one to one with the comics and stuff, but I enjoyed uh, the stuff they brought in and the dynamic and, and you know, uh, the introduction of 
a, a person at the end of the, the first season. I was like, yes, I was, I was waiting for this person to show up. So, um, yeah, no, nah, it's uh, I really enjoyed it, and um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was quite a lot of fun. Um, what's the second part of the question? Um, if you could draw an existing comic series, what would it be? Oh, Green Lantern. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, if I had the opportunity to draw Green Lantern, that's yeah, that's that's the main thing. Green Lantern, Spider Man, like you know, anything, um, yeah, anything in, in those warehouses, I would I would gladly draw. Awesome. Hey, I'm going to pass over to my colleague who we actually forgot to introduce you at the start. So you want to tell everyone your name? Oh, well, uh, I did get introduced. Um... No, my colleague here in the Comic Fest studio didn't get introduce himself at the start of the day. And we've had a few people oh. question, coming in being like, who's the person next to Sam? Yeah. So my, so my name is Neil Johnson. Sam and I have kind of co-curated the whole thing and I work for Wellington City Libraries. Um, We have another good um, anonymous question and it says what makes a superhero genre so appealing to you Mikael? I guess um, you know the su superheroes are modern myths and you know as a kid I loved mythology Greek Roman you know Norse Egyptian like I just loved those tales of, of otherworldly characters and one and I guess superheroes are that modern equivalent and so you know the mythologies of it all, and as well as the the, the moral tales uh, wrapped around in these mythologies are very appealing, as well as some of the character designs and whatnot. So, yeah, for me, I guess it's just an extension of of my interest in mythologies uh, that really kind of centered my love of, of the superhero genre. And Moon Knight's TV series shows up really well because the bit in the British Museum and in the Egyptology um, halls. It really brings in that ancient mythological aspect to Moon Knight, really to the fore early on. Yeah, well, exactly. That's why I was, I was, I was interested, in, and it was kind of cool to see him, you know, really kind of lean towards a lot of the mythology, the Egyptian mythology and stuff. So I was excited, and then also the introduction of other, other, um, I guess, Egyptian gods that aren't really super popular. You know, outside of the you know, the usual Osiris, um, you know, in Anubis and all that, Ra and, and Horus and stuff like it was like, oh, here we got, you know, we got Konshu, we got Amit, we got Tawaret, you know. And so it was it was kind of cool to kind of showcase those little known um, gods, Egyptian gods, and, and give them more of the spotlight. So, yeah. I've got a question as well. I mean, one of the things about drawing superheroes of all types, it's maybe different from other kind of drawing, is the the use of dynamics, you know, the way you make them move and feel like they're kind of doing, you know, dramatic things. How do you think about that? Do you think about that before you start drawing? You go, oh, I want it, this character to be, like, moving that way, or, or does that kind of flow as you start to draw, Mikael? Yeah, you know, um, one of the things about, you know, superhero comics is that dynamicism that, that's prevalent in, in the way the, you know, the character moves, right? It's, um, it's about kind of conveying energy and movement. And so, you know, obviously if you're going to draw a superhero, they have to kind of be in, in kind of mid-flight or, uh, or either, uh, like, you know, if they're standing still, it's like in a very stoic pose. So they're never really just static. You know, you, you kind of want energy and, and, and and uh movement in in the so yeah so like you know kind of got the you know kind of you know arm reaching out as he's kind of diving at you um so you know contrary the the defender of night travelers are there any particular artists that you really admire for doing that work that has have those dynamic poses Oh, uh, you know, uh, you know, especially with the X Men stuff. Like, you know, X Men has you know, the the nineties X Men. You know, is one of those those um, series that had so many dynamic kind of um, artists. You know, from Arthur Adams to Mark Silvestri to Jim Lee. Uh, you know, Joe Mad and stuff. So, you know, there's all kinds of artists that I really I really enjoy. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, Who's who's another fantastic? Um, but yeah, like you know, a lot of those, a lot of those artists, 
um, and it really kind of captured my imagination and it really opened my eyes to what is possible. And how did you start drawing? Did you um, go to school or learn any of this stuff or you mostly self-taught or? Well, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm self-taught in, in terms of I, I didn't go to art school. You know, I kind of just learned by doing it. Um, and, um, yeah, and then just kind of trial and error. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's just an interesting thing. Cause it was just, it was just something I wanted to do. I never really knew kind of how to really make it happen. Um, cause there's no real kind of defined pathway, you know, to success in this field. Um, you know, um, I just made it up as I go, <laughs> but that's, that's kind of, that's kind of like, you know, um, how I happened. I'm just like, uh, oh, let's see how this goes and, and, and just trying new things, putting myself, challenging myself as well. And, and, and really kind of, um, see how far I can go. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked that I've been able to, to have a, a pretty, pretty, uh, successful career so far, um, in, in this industry. Yeah, you've gone over to um, San Diego Comic Con a few times. Is that right? Yep, um, I've been to San Diego Comic Con a few times. Um, New York Comic Con, uh, Emerald City Comic Con in, in Seattle, WonderCon in LA, um, and then WrestleCon in Dallas. Um, so yes, I've done a few. I've done a few conventions in America. I've done Oz Comic Cons um, in um, in Australia, obviously. Um, so yeah, so it's been it's been interesting, and I've done work, you know, I've done trading cards for Marvel and uh, comic books with WWE um, and whatnot. So yeah, no, it's pretty it's pretty rad. I'm actually looking at uh, going back to San Diego Con again this year. Um, I've got my um, professional accreditation already sorted, so it's just a matter of um, funds to get over to the states, really. You, you mentioned uh, WrestleCom and Dallas, and obviously your career has several kind of bows, like, um, and uh, you did headlock. So I was wondering about that overlap between your wrestling career and your drawing career, because there's obviously a big overlap there. Yeah, um, you know, uh, comics, wrestling, you know, the, the thing that they have in common is that they're both uh, forms of storytelling. Uh, that's what they really come down to. Um, there's just, you know, two avenues that, um, I, I touched through and because of, of, um, that overlap and stuff, uh, a lot of wrestlers are big comic book fans. So a lot of them actually become part of, uh, the head graphic novels I illustrate. Um, and so through my work at Headlock, you know, I've been able to, you know, um, hang out and meet a lot of wrestlers who are fans of my work, which I find intriguing because, you know, I'm a big fan of their work as, as pro wrestlers, you know, guys like Ric Flair and, uh, Mick Foley, uh, Jerry, the King Lola, who does covers for, um, headlocked. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just a, like, I always, always kind of had to pinch myself, you know, and one of the biggest supporters of headlock, Samoa Joe, is one of my favorite wrestlers. Is a huge comic fan, and so, you know, when when WWE asked him to write a story for the X, uh, he came to me and Michael Kingston, the Headlock team, to kind of bring that story to life, and so that's how I got my you know my start with the uh, WWE comics, you know, and those comics were, you know, available in comic book stores all around the world. You know, I got to draw John Cena, I got to draw Stone Cold and The Rock and Bret Hart and. Macho Man and Rick Air and stuff. So like it's it's been pretty cool to to kind of have those connections with wrestlers and then have them kind of um I guess what would you say? Um vet us as as these are the guys I want to work with. Um so yeah. I guess the other thing is that um wrestlers as well, there's kind of heroes and villains and a comic kind of aspect to you know, you know, like The Undertaker and uh, all that. They they will adopt kind of like like heroic characters or villainous characters, of course. 
And I was wondering if you could talk to us about uh, your wrestling character and how you went about in creating, and and like also like the costume you wear and things. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, when I wrestle, you know, uh, my character's name is Liger, half lion, half tiger, full salmon, and it kind of came about, um, you know. You know, my costumes and stuff I design, and I also based them a lot of comic book costumes. My first costume was based on Green Lantern, and then when I became a heel, a bad guy, um, I kind of went with like this this uh, purple, this royal purple and gold and black kind of combination. But then after that, I t- I, I kind of created a a Red Lantern style costume again because I'm a bad guy. So uh, I'm kind of wearing. A, I did have a, a Sinestro Corps style costume but now I, i'm back to the the yellow and black but the my current costume is based off uh, the paladin armor uh from um voltron uh the legendary defender um uh, the netflix series because uh, the yellow paladin hunk in that series is canon in canon the salmon the creator said he was salmon so i was like yes my next my next costume is gonna be the salmon paladin uh for voltron so um so yeah so for me like even though I beat people up and I, and, I, and I present like this kind of gr- angry character a lot of the times, I still like my geek self to kind of come through because that's who I am. And and I think a lot of people appreciate that because, again, it adds layers rather than just being, I miss the badass all the time. It's like, I miss the badass, but I'm also geeky, but I'll still beat you up if you try and muck me. <laughs> so, you know, so it's that kind of thing. It's like, I dare you. I dare you to to make fun of my my passions and uh and, and see how it gets, where they get to. So yeah, so for me, uh, very much in the, a lot of a lot of the stuff I do, you know, is all intertwined: comics, wrestling, video games. Um, yeah. We've got a question from Bill, who's um, written in, and he asks you, "Who is your favorite comic villain?" Who's my favorite comic villain? Uh, so let me just uh. So down here is my my um, display of favorite um, villains. So because bad guys need love too. Yeah. So I've got all these like uh, villains on display here. Um, oh, it's really hard to say who my favorite villain is because it'd be like a it'd actually be a toss up between Thanos and Doctor Doom. Um, you know, I love the fact that like you know not movie Thanos. I, I you know I did enjoy movie Thanos, but I love comic book Thanos and the fact that he is, you know, um, he is driven by love. That's, that's something that everybody can kind of understand and relate to, you know, fortunately the person he loves is death, the you know, physical embodiment of death. And because Thanos is really hard to kill, the only way Thanos can really meet his love is by killing other people. <laughs> so, you know, Hey, I've killed a billion people. And then she shows up and he's like, Oh cool. There's my love. But he can't really spend much time with her because he's so hard to kill and death for him is very much, you know, um, one of the things like when he finally died in the annihilation conquest, uh, annihilation, um, he was dead for maybe a couple of years and then they brought him back. And when he came back, he was angry because he was finally at peace <laughs> like he was like i'm dead i'm with death my love i'm happy and then they brought him back and he came back so angry and i and I kind of laughed at that because it was one of those things again he's driven by love it's just a very twisted way of showing it um so yeah so i think that's what i like about Thanos. again he's all powerful he's omnipotent but his motivation is so relatable and i guess it's it's, the, it's that moral again like as i was talking about superheroes comics that the mythologies, the moral tales, and stuff like is very much relate. Uh, no, um, is what I love about those 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 stories. Yeah, it feels like over the last sort of thirty years or so, there's been a real change in how we present heroes and villains. That oftentimes there's a complexity there that maybe wasn't there in the in the kind of early years of comics, but have now become really standard that what a character that might start out as a as a villain you might end up having quite a lot of sympathy for and vice versa a hero that has that or a character that starts off as a hero kind of has some complexity going on and some things that oh maybe you're a little bit not great or making some yeah morally 
compromising positions, yeah. Can I ask about um, commissions and stuff like that, Mikkel? Do you, how do um, do you get commissions? Do people uh, approach you um, by having seen your work or seen some of your um, books in shops, or or do you have an agent? I'm just wondering, you know, for people who are maybe starting off in a comic career. Yeah, um, it's 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 very uh, it's it's all session dependent. Um, you know, when it comes to like advertising work and stuff, I do have an agent. I'm represented by International Rescue, uh, um, and so I'd get odd odd jobs through there uh, for advertising and corporate work. Other times, or just through word of mouth uh, or some article, or they'll, they'll come across my work. Um, I don't really take too much uh, personal commissions because I've just been so busy, um, you know. Um, and that that's the that's so it's busy, and also um, you know some people think I'm cheap. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not. Um, so yeah, so it, it's interesting, and um, yeah, it's a case by case basis. Um, you know, a lot of times the, the commissions I do get uh, um, are like for comics or kind of. Not necessarily long term, but like for a decent chunk of time. Um, so I, I'm, you know, people have been trying to hit me up all year for commission stuff. I'm like, I'm busy till August at least, so I, I can't take on any new projects. And you know, I'm currently working on artwork for a documentary. Um, I'm working on artwork for a TV show. Working on my next gra headlock graphic novel. I'm working on making a video game project with a uh, with a triple A studio. Um, again, I can't disclose that NDAs and all that, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a busy dude. Uh, so you know, so commissions, uh, you know, kind of personal commissions, I don't necessarily take on outside of um, conventions and stuff. If I'm doing a convention, then I'll kind of make time for for a handful of commissions. But outside, nah, it's a, I'm pretty much uh, booked out. And we've got a question from Barry. Um, how do people find you and follow you online? Um, Barry asks, are you a YouTuber? I know that you do uh, Twitch quite a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really do a YouTube uh, outside of like, you know, I also do live streaming on Twitch, uh, which I've kind of, again, uh, live streaming is fun, but I don't have the time to because I'm too busy working on stuff I can't share um so yeah so i don't i don't i do have a youtube channel in order to find me it's actually very easy uh bloody is my website uh bloody Salmon is my social media handle and stuff like that in most in most cases uh so it's very easy to kind of find me online um yeah but yeah i don't, I don't really much uh you can find some art streams on my on my twitch and stuff but again, a lot of the work I I do I can't share publicly, so I can't really live stream art. I'll usually be live streaming Tekken um, and whatnot. So yeah, it's a really great question. Then, um, and sadly, it's anonymous. But I said you've mentioned being Samoan, Mikael, and you've depicted the Samoan characters, language, and culture. Can you talk to us about what this means to you? Yeah. So you know, coming up as as a as an artist. Right, I didn't. I didn't necessarily realize how little representation there was of um, Pacific Island, you know, Pacifica, Tangata Moana um, artists there are in the comic space, you know, and um, and so you know, I just knew this was something I wanted to do and and, and loved. And I guess as I got older, I re and, and built my career, I realized I was in a unique position to kind of highlight more of my culture so you know 2020 i uh, i, I co-created the Oli Aenga Samoa on a uh, web comic which is uh the first ever salmon language uh comic uh which is also available in english you can read that all on my on my website bloody salmon.com you know i did the pacific heroes books uh i've done you know several um new zealand school journals uh, one particularly about the Polynesian Panthers, um, and and you know, there's the the new one which came out this year, which is an autobiographical comic. Um, so I got to uh, relive my traumas um, and and illustrate them for the kids to learn about. But it's only available in Samoan and Tongan languages. 
Um, so it's really cool to kind of be in that position to be able to kind of um, promote my culture, my language. Um, but, you know, it, it took a bit of uh, time to kind of feel comfortable with that because obviously, um, you know, for me, there's, you know, I also have my own, um, I guess, insecurities about not being Samoan enough, you know, being New Zealand born and whatnot. So now I'm in the position where like, you know what, I'm Samoan. Like it doesn't matter. Everywhere I go, I'm proud to say I'm Samoan. That's why my my handle is bloody Samoan because you can't say I'm anything else because he's got that dude Samoan. My my whole my last name Muripola is a very Samoan last name. So you know, I, I don't shy away from being Samoan. And now I'm I'm kind of in a position where like, yep, I am Samoan. I'm going to promote my people. I'm going to promote, um, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, it's it's on it really to kind of be in that position to be um i guess i don't like to be an inspiration uh because i don't know i i hope i can inspire people but i don't want to be an inspiration um because that's a lot of that's a lot of uh, i guess responsibility and you know as uncle ben said you know with great power must also come great responsibility and i don't want that responsibility <laughs> um i just want to be a, a reckless fool uh, who does what he loves so yeah but you also on your um, on your social media, you're always promoting other artists and um, creatives of all different types and forms and things. Particularly Moana Pacifica, like that feels like it's something that's really important to you around creating and supporting community. Oh, exactly. Uh, as I said, like when I when I started, you know, I was I was surprised with the lack of of uh, representation. I guess um in those spaces and so now that i'm in a position to be able to kind of augment and, and signal boost you know because especially with the digital age and tools like ipads ipad pros and stuff there's a lot of um tangata moana artists coming out of the woodwork and really kind of making a go of it so i'm like okay cool you know let me share let me share your work and stuff because you know i want others to see that it's not just me um and also i don't want to be the only one so it's great for awareness uh for others to understand that there are there there are more of us out there um so yeah and do you think that's changing do you think there is more and more growing all the time oh yeah um as i said you know the, the, the digital age made it so much easier for people to be able to share their work um, and get their work out there. So I'm, I'm seeing more more of it pop up uh, all the time. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with how uh, things are going. Um, you know, and I just want to see more. You know, trying to more on a you know professional artists out there um, doing the work. Cool. Hey, we've got a question from um, Sophia, who's eight. And Sophia asks, what app or software do you use to help with your art? Well, software, uh, so this is uh, called Clip Studio Paint. Um, you know, there's, there's an iPad version. So if you have an iPad, you can uh, download it. Uh, it is a pay, I think, a subscription. Uh, but, you know, you can also use uh, Procreate as well, which is also a, a great software. Um, but yeah, I've been using the software in all of its forms since 2007 since you were be since before you were born um so so, uh, so this is what i'm used to um and whatnot nice and um holly asks how do you know what moonlight looks like and how do you keep how do you kind of remember how to draw them yeah so like, you know, if i don't know how to draw something i'll usually put up uh i'll usually have like images um reference photos so like there's nothing wrong with reference photos uh, google images is your friend uh so like you know but like i i think last night as i was drawing the figure I was like, oh, i'm just gonna draw moon Knight. but because i decided to draw moon Knight on that in that moment i don't have any um any reference photos so i'm kind of going off moon Knight that i know from the comics also moon Knight from the tv series i'm using uh as an artist i'm always kind of picking up um visuals uh and kind of storing them in my in my visual library so i can refer to them so i'm just kind of going off all these different experiences with the character that i've had 
uh, and kind of putting them into the artwork. And so it's a mix, it's a mix of the the TV one and, and the comic one. Um, so yeah. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about um, Arkham Comics, the the a story you kind of jointly set up, and the kind of like the, the kind of things that you're selling. It do you go for a lot of American comics or Japanese or New Zealand or just a big mishmash? How you decide what the the, the treasures and gems in the store are? Yeah, so you know, uh, if, if you're in Auckland, I also work part time. Uh, I can see comics. And we're we're kind of um, back back issue specialists, you know, old issues, collectibles and stuff like that. Uh, we don't necessarily we don't deal with like the new comics. Um, don't really deal with uh, like in you know, the manga as well. There's there's quite a lot of um, stockists of manga, and, and, and um, so it's not really what we specialize in. Um, but um, yeah, we just kind of deal with old comics. Uh, collectibles and stuff. So you know, if you're if you're looking for issues, we're the guys to talk to. Um, yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about the setup that you're you're in at the moment? My my danger room. Um, yeah. Yep. The danger room. So uh, if you if you do find me on social media, you'll find a video of my setup. And, uh, you know, you can see all the action figures and stuff. What you don't see are the four monitors, uh, that I'm running, um, in my setup. And, uh, you also find the video, uh, of, of the setup as, as, as it is. And so, um, my bed is my desk. So my bed transforms into my desk. Um, so, um, yeah, this is one of those things where it's kind of cool to have the space, um, that I can kind of live, work, um, and do anything I need to do. So, so we're really enjoying watching you draw at yeah. Moon Knight. And I was wondering if you could just talk to us what, what stage of the process, because you've obviously done the kind of rough blocking out the, the, the shapes and where you're at and where you would go after this as well oh well yeah you know um she you know the roughs kind of helped me figure out where everything's gonna go beforehand um so i'm not running blind and just making it up as i go even though there's more of that again like the thing i love about art is is very subjective and you kind of find what works for you um you know um this is kind of my favorite part um is the inking because that's kind of for me where um where it really comes to life, um, but, you know, certain people, that's why my, my pencils in there are, are fairly loose because I like to bring, I like to flesh it out, um, in this, in this, this stage. Um, so yeah, but, uh, but yeah, I'm not a big color guy. So like coloring is one of those things that I always find a bit of a chore. I'm very much a black and white lines kind of guy. So yeah, this is always my favorite kind of part of uh, the process. And I noticed that you're playing a lot with um, line, the heaviness of your line and whether it goes heavy or, or light and things like that. Yeah, um, you know, line, line works, you know, uh, kind of give you that, um, the illusion of, of, of depth and, and, and form, you know, if something's closer to you, um, you, know, the dark, you know, the heavier the line, you know, as it recedes back into the background, you kind of a little thinner, taper it off a bit. Uh, so yeah, so kind of, you know, like the main muscle groups here, I've got like with the, the pecs, the, the chest muscles, you know, are, are more solid than, you know, the abs down here because that's kind of what's in front. And so there'll be a bit more definition. So yeah, so I play with line widths to kind of get a sense of, of shape and, um, and also illusion of depth as well. And do you have to have quite a good understanding of anatomy as well? I noticed you talked a bit earlier on when we first started that you have the kind of models that you can kind of shape and mold to the right position. But thinking about muscle groups and, and things like that, how do you learn about that stuff? Observation. That's, that's, observation is key. 
um and that's that's kind of what your your, your job is as an artist is observe and then regurgitate um so yeah so as i said like you know i'm always constantly bringing stuff into uh you know to, into my you know, story stuff away in my visual library um and so always looking at you know things outside of comics and and that's you know uh film television animation you know i'm always uh video games you know i'm always looking and and, and studying and observing uh, all these visual mediums because uh, there will be a time where I'll be able to incorporate that into my comic work, and so you know, you know that that kind of skill, I I also incorporate for you know anatomy and studying bits and pieces, which is again why Google Images is great reference for this because if you don't know something, you can always find a, an image of it, but you're not just copying the image. You're looking at the image, you're studying the form and, and the shapes and stuff. And so it's not just about, oh, I'm just going to copy this photo. I'm about, okay, how does that, how does that work? How does that look? How can I draw that? So yeah, so it's, it's just more than copying than to reference. It's about ab actively observing and, and digesting it in order to be able to regurgitate it in your eye. Nice. And we've got a question here from, uh, my nephew co william hi william thank you for tuning in um he asks what do you find the most hardest part of a hero to draw um the hardest i guess you know one of the hardest things to draw in general uh, are usually the hands you know because you know um it's real easy to draw bad hands um so yeah so hands are always i guess one of those uh difficult things to draw um just because you know, they're one of the things I find uh, that makes hands difficult is the fact that you know, when you're looking at perspective, perspective can be hard anyway. But like you know, the palm, you know, which is the the largest part of the hand, has its own perspective compared to, and then the fingers have their own perspective. So you have to you have to figure out like how all of those little things work and. Uh, separately, but then also in connection to each other, and so I think that's why ha hands can be quite hard because you know again there's all these there's all these things you have to factor in and how to draw hands well. Um, so yeah, so it doesn't have to it's not just superheroes; it's just hands in general. And we've got a question from Monty, and um, quick shout out to Monty who who would have been here, I suspect, but he's broken his leg. So great to have you watching, <laughs> Monty. Um, uh, does Mikael still work selling comics? What are the best parts of working in a comic store? Um, Monty says, I've always managed, imagined it as a dream job. Yeah, no, you know, with comics, again, like, it's one of those things that I dreamed about, you know, as a kid, like, that was my childhood dream. Um, you know, do I know how to make that happen? Nah. But, uh, you know, I just kind of made it up as I went along, and so, Every time I, I get an opportunity to draw comics or draw bits and pieces and get paid for it, <laughs> I'm like, this is awesome. Um, why would I complain? Um, it doesn't mean that the, the work isn't hard. It's definitely a lot of hard work. It's a lot of effort. It's a lot of trial and tribulation. It's a lot of falling down and picking yourself back up, you know, especially in uncharted territories like this kind of um, um, industry. Um, but like, you know, all of that is worth it you know, to, to kind of, um, have, you know, to enjoy the fruits of my labor and all that stuff. So yeah, it's, you know, it's just one of those things where I, every, I try to enjoy every single moment I get to the live this dream and I try not to take it for granted. So, yeah. Yeah. I feel like you're, you're living your dream life but you are incredibly hardworking and you're doing lots of different things all the time from working in the comic store to do, being a Duffy book reader, working in schools, doing wrestling, doing movies. Like, how do you sleep? Doing live? <laughs> I, well, yeah, I don't really. Um, I probably get like five, six hours of sleep <laughs> every day because I'm, I'm doing everything else. But like... Uh, um, I've, I've kind of realized again because I've been around for a while. I kind of realized recently that you know because people always ask me how do I do all the stuff I do, you know how how are you able to do it? And I think for me taking risks um, 
and trying new things uh, is just part and parcel of my of who I am now. Because the biggest risk I ever took was pursuing comics as a career, and because that's paid off, everything else is just like easy. Everything else is like I, I don't have to kind of go. Oh, well, I oh, shall I try that? Maybe, maybe not. I'm just like, cool, let's try this. You know, <laughs> let's, let's see where this takes me. And then, uh, in doing so, uh, I somehow managed to do it really well. And so I'm like, cool, that's something else I can add to my hat. You know, and so, um, so yeah, so one of the things I've been kind of exploring recently is directing, like live action directing. Oh, so that's something that's something I want to kind of pursue as well. So, um, just understanding that the biggest risk I ever took paid off. Trying new things is is like you know it's, it's no major. Um, taking risks is no major because the biggest risk paid off. So, um, so yeah, so that's how that's how I'm able to try all these things, and that's why I'm doing all these things because uh, you know for me I'm just like, well, what's the wor- what's most people will say what's the worst that could happen. My philosophy is what is the best that could happen. And so, yeah, so understanding that and going, well, if I try this and it works out, then cool. I get to do all these cool things. If I, if I try it out and it doesn't work out, then at least I've kind of learned some kind of lesson along the way. So it's always win-win for me. Um, and that mindset has really helped me be able to navigate and do all of these things that I'm for. You, as you are saying, you do so many amazing things. Can I ask you a, a, a personal question? Which one are you most proud of? Well, yeah, it's uh, it would have to be the comics. It's, it, like, you know, I still sometimes think I can't believe I made this a thing. Like, that's 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 the you know, um, especially with all the uncertainty about whether it is a thing or not, you know. Um, so yeah, so definitely being able to do draw comics, get paid for it, get paid well for it, um, you know, it's just one of those things where you know I just can't believe. Yeah, this is my life, and and I'm immensely proud of being able to do what I love uh, as a career. Amazing! And if you were to give any advice to any um, emerging artists who might be streaming in, watching, what what advice would you would you tell them? <laughs> um, I'm not too sure if I'd say that because uh, we do have some young viewers. Um... <laughs> yeah, keep it family friendly if you can. Yeah. <laughs> I, it just doesn't. It just doesn't have the same poignancy and, and the same thing if I if, if it's filtered. Uh, but the thing, my my key, my keys to success is do the work and don't be a dick. Um, <laughs> that's kind of it, really. Uh, that that's kind of my philosophy. If you do the work and you treat people well, you'll usually find success. Um, because you have to be exceptionally talented in order for people to negate your uh, your dickishness to work with you. And I find that if you're really good to work with and you do good work, you're more more often than not people will come to you. So that's my yeah, just do the work and don't be a dick. That's nice. That's yeah. excellent. Sorry, I can't I can't figure out a way to make it punchy without without <laughs> Yeah, and, and sanitize at the same time. So I apologize to you young viewers. <laughs> we knew what we were getting when we asked you to be on the live stream, Mikhail. Um, Sally has popped up with a question as well and says, how does your understanding of, conflu- of, of comics influence you as a film director? Well, it's interesting because like, I haven't directed the film yet. I've been taking uh, these, these awesome classes of Screen Trip uh, run by Equity New Zealand and Pisa, the Pacific Island Screen Artists Guild, and it's pretty much about like getting actors, writers, directors ready for you know screen and television. So I've been doing a couple of those, and I, I, I like in my mind, I'm thinking my skills as a comic book artist because I think very visually should kind of slot in well with being a director. I just don't know whether the visions I have in my head are actually shootable in real life. That's that's my that's my biggest concern. I'm like, is this can this can this be done? I don't know. Um, so the last screen that I did, um, you know, we had this great, amazing guest speaker. Um, what's his name? Tearapa, um Kahu, I think his last name was. Uh, he's a director. He did like Poye. He did, um, you know, a whole bunch of amazing 
uh, films, and he was just like, "Are you ready to shoot this tomorrow?" Because he really liked the piece um, that the actors did, and, and also what the writer wrote. And he's like, "You guys ready to shoot this tomorrow?" I said, "Well, you know, yeah, pretty much, because I actually storyboarded it." <laughs> and then everyone's looking at me like, "Wait, you storyboarded this? The, like scene groups? Like this is these scene, the screen fit scenes aren't? You know, there's no." obligation to like actually take it outside of the the screen fit and so like you know there's no pressure to actually like film this but because i i think visually and i needed to um kind of put it out there like in you know, after reading the script okay, this is how i envision i need to draw that because as an artist like that's that's the curse we have you kind of have to yeah. um you know put it onto paper or put it out there so i storyboarded the whole scene and everyone just looked at me like who is this guy and I said, well, that's that's how I that's how I that's how I kind of absorb stuff is by vis- visually, and I need to kind of you know. Um, so yeah, so a lot of people were just like, man, you could probably start working now. Like that's you know just because of that 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 I guess um, that gumption and and that know how that I have as an artist. So yeah, so it was uh, yeah. So I think my skills would be well suited to live action and everything i just haven't tested that yet um so yeah yeah it was interesting in our chat that's coming up later today we talked with jonathan king who is also a comic book artist and a film director and he was saying one of the bonuses of comic director of making your own comics is that you don't have to worry about budget that whatever your imagination can think of as long as you can draw it then that's that'll work but with with film directing you have to kind of think oh wait can someone create this <laughs> yeah that's 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 what i'm finding myself because yeah as an artist as a creator in comics you're you're the casting director you're the set builder you're the you know, you're the director you're you know all that stuff and so all of the all of the power is in your hands and you're only limited by a your own imagination and b your own skills uh, but yeah, when it comes to live action stuff, there's all these logistics involved, and like, how can you, you know, how can you kind of shepherd all these people to kind of make it work? And so that's the thing I'm kind of worried about is that maybe in my mind, because of my comic background, I'm too ambitious. <laughs> and uh, uh, like, will I be too ambitious when I start directing? Um, but it's going to be a fun journey, and it's it's good to kind of test that and and push those skills because I've found that. All the best stuff is just beyond your comfort zone. So again, that the initial greatest risk paid off. So I'm always looking at ways to push my skills, push my talents, push uh, myself as a creative. I'm looking for new avenues. Yeah, it's interesting to Jonathan King because he's almost like doing the, the reverse trajectory of yourself because he started off as a director who now works in graphic novels. Um, and he talks a lot, uh, quite a lot about how he storyboards films and stuff like that and how that overlaps with some of his work. We've got a great um, question that's just come in. We've got a few questions and it's from Leo and Leo wants to know, how do you balance everything you're doing with a social life and family? Um, yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's also a key thing um, as well, that work-life balance. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes you got to make sacrifices, you know, sometimes you got to be like, I can't go to that party. I can't go to their birthday. Uh, I can't go to this wedding or anything because you you really need to get stuff done. And yeah, it, it's really hard. And the funny thing is, is that I don't actually have a schedule. Um, I do things when I feel like it. That's that's kind of and and, I, and some people I know uh, always look at me like I'm crazy, but I just I just do things when I feel like it. And I think that's what keeps me, I guess, fairly energized and and doing stuff and. You know, I like I've just re- I've just realized how much I love going to the movies, uh, and so I go to the movies. And luckily, as an artist, movies are a business expense. So um, because I'm going there for research, I'm going there to learn and observe. Um, you know, I've seen Doctor Strange uh, in the Multiversal Madness twice. I've seen everything, everywhere, all at once six times. Um, so um, so yeah, so I'll find time for bits and pieces like that. But you know. It, in the end it's very much about i guess priorities uh but for me i'm always like oh do i yeah i'll stay home and i'll just kind of do my thing um or i'll be like oh, i'm gonna go out so 
yeah, uh, I guess to each their own, really, on 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 how one will navigate that. But yeah, it is a very precarious balancing act, that work life balance. Yeah, it's interesting like that everywhere, all at once, all the time. Lots of um, graphic artists and comic artists we've talked to have mentioned that, and that film has a very, I think, graphic artist, comic artist feel about it and tone. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 um, you know, and and like one of the coolest things is that uh, you know, like I, I learned so much about the film again, being a big fan of the film, I was like, oh, what can I learn about this? And and the the movie poster, that movie poster was done by James Jean, uh, you know, uh, cover artist for Fables, you know, amazing uh, fine artist, Asian American as well. So it was really cool that, you know, he um, he got to kind of do the cover for that. Um, Claudia Lee, uh, New Zealand uh, designer, designed some of the outrageous uh, costumes for Jobu Chupaki. Um, you know, they got Randy Newman. I, I the first time I watched, it, I was like, I was cracking up because that sounds like that sounds so much like a Randy Newman song. And then I found out that it's actually Randy Newman uh, playing, uh, doing the voice of one of the characters, and I, I just thought that was amazing. Just everything about it, like you know, I could. I, I think one of the things that really resonates for me about that film, outside of the the subject matter, is that you can you can see the um, the kind of um, low budget uh, kind of creativity that comes with limits and 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 how they made the best of of what they didn't have, um, and 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 so I think that's one of the things I love about the film itself was I could tell that these guys didn't have the biggest budget, but boy, you couldn't really you could really tell um, with what they had because a the story was amazing and b like everyone that worked on it gave it their all. Um, you know, despite the limitations. And sometimes limitations, uh, are, it's good to have limitations. It's good to work within limits because uh, limits can provide you with uh, ways to think outside the box. You know, how can, I, how can I do this with little resource, which I'm used to all the time, um, and how can I make it still work and, and do what I need it to do? Um, so, yeah, so that film is amazing. Definitely go see it. It just sucks that it's not a major release uh, all around available. And I saw that some of your fan art as well got some pretty um, high quality praise. Yeah, actually, I could do some fan art of um, of everything, everywhere, all at once. Um, because one of the universes, a uh, couple of the characters are pro wrestlers. And so I was like, as a pro wrestler, you know, of course I'm going to draw this. Um, and it was shared by Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, the legendary Jamie Lee. This I was uh, stoked okay. about that. Yeah. Um, and then the Daniels, the directors, they they commented on it and said that it was rocks and stuff. And just recently, Sun Sunlocks, Sunlux, the uh, the uh, guys who did the soundtrack, they loved it as well. So it was just kind of cool to kind of get that connection. Um, and yeah, so definitely highly recommend everything everywhere all at once. It's now in my top five all time films. That's how good it is. So. Yeah, I mean, it hasn't been out that long, and you've already seen it, what, six times, did you say? Times. I saw it for the sixth time last night. Um, yeah, I was just like in the air, and I was like, oh, sweet, it's playing around the time I'm in this area. I'm just going to go to the cinema and watch it. Um, nice. Hey, we're running close to time, but we're, I'm just, I, I think we just keep going with your live stream for a couple more minutes, because I really want to see your cape arrive. Um but uh, you're talking about storytelling and a lot of a lot of the work that you do, whether it's wrestling, whether it's uh, the Duffy books or comics or films, um, is all about storytelling. What is it that you love about telling stories? Well, telling stories is just an inherently human thing to do. I think it's just everyone loves stories. That's that's why we love what we love books films televisions stories uh, uh integral to every everyday life for us as humans as part of our human experience is about sharing and learning about the human experience and so just telling stories i think everyone has uh has a talent and inherent nature to uh, about um about storytelling so yeah it's just the mediums on which you tell your stories is what changes. And so, yeah, I just happen to tell stories through comics and pro wrestling. 
we've got a, a panel coming on quite soon, and one of the things we talk about is how comics are bleeding into other art forms, you know, like uh, digital comics, and now we have semi-animated elements, and we're just talking about how many movies are, um, you know, influenced by comic and graphic art and stuff, and TV, you know, Moon Knight and stuff like that. So there is obviously that story. It's just such a, I think, a human desire to have our stories and our lives relate to us in different ways. Yeah, and I feel like the world is opening up a little bit more that we are at a place where the audience is demanding more diversity in their stories, more characters. We've gone beyond the uh, kind of white guy hero thing into and everything everywhere all at once is a prime example of that, right? Yeah, no, like one of the things I think the way I described it was that everything everywhere all at once is a madcap multiversal migrant martial arts menagerie of a movie. Um, That's you know, great alliteration. Stan Lee will be proud. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, and um, yeah, like if you're if you're a child of immigrants, if you're part of the diaspora, there's there's a different level to to the mother daughter relationship that you just wouldn't get if you weren't part of that kind of uh you know, that, that group. Um, so yeah, like the the idea that you know uh, you have parents from somewhere else living in a new land, being the the first generation in this new land, and that that push and pull of like do you do you stick with tradition do you be your own person do you do you assimilate do you you know kind of so like there's yeah like that's one of the things i really loved about the film as well was that that that, that lens of diaspora and, and the migrant story uh as well as all the madcap absurd stuff which i love as well um i also happened to order like one of the last hot dog hands uh, from the A twenty four um, website uh, before they sold out, so uh, I'm I'm can't wait to to draw some, try and draw something with the hot dog hands or play some video games with the hot dog hands, um, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. I think people are just wanting again the human experience, different human experiences, and I for one am am, am glad to see uh, more voices telling their stories, and uh, you know. Um, Especially with Moon Knight, you had uh, Muhammad Daib, uh, the director and showrunner, who's Egyptian. He wanted to show a realistic version of Egypt rather than the kind of, you know, the romantic style that you see in, in films and stuff. So, you know, there's uh, and Miss Marvel uh, coming out on Disney Plus as well has a lot of Pakistani or uh, Muslim um, showrunners, directors, writers, you know, so there's these opportunities for people to tell their stories with their own voice, um, you know, and, and the changing of the guard. And obviously some people will fight against that, but I, I am all for these new experiences and these new stories and understanding of people that you may not necessarily know in your everyday life. And that's the best thing about stories is, is the, the, um, the general understanding of people that you may not know about. Yeah. It's that twofold win of there's people who've never ha ha felt seen or represented on screen getting to see themselves, but also for those who who maybe don't understand other people or haven't had as much experience to get to see difference on the screen as well. So it's like win, win, win. win yeah. All right. Well, I think we are just about at time. It's a, been a pleasure to talk with you. And An absolute joy, as it, always. Yeah, and I'm so excited. I feel like I just want to keep watching and seeing what you're doing. You know that Sweet, I'm just doing. I'm just doing a quick. Uh, I'm just doing a quick pass of, of. The good thing about Moon Knight is he's white. Um, yeah. So I don't have to worry about a lot of different colors. Uh, so I'm just going to do this quick. This is great. Of, um, thing and then. Here we go. Oh, amazing. <laughs> um, Thank you. That's so incredible yeah. just to watch that come out of thin thin air, thin pixels. I don't know what the yeah. right word is. Hey, thank you so much, Mikhail. Yes. This has been wonderful. Can you tell the audience where they can find you or follow you or buy your things? 
yeah well again thank you for having me and uh appreciate all the questions and everyone tuning in um yeah very easy to find me you don't even have to know how to spell my name uh Mikhail Muripola. uh you just google bloody Samoan and you'll find me there's pretty much too much information about me on the internet <laughs> but uh that's a good and bad thing um so yeah so you'll find my website you'll find my socials um and yeah um and or you'll see me at the school near you i'll be in christchurch in two weeks no, next week um yeah. for the storylines tour so um so yeah so canterbury the canterbury region i'll be driving around uh writers and artists uh, to visit schools so yeah you'll see me at school near you too so yep thank you so wonderful much thank you so much have a wonderful rest of your day and yeah thank you for being an amazing talent and telling your stories and we look forward to seeing the more stories that you tell in whichever form that is yeah we really fun to see nudes movies <laughs> cool thank you for having me enjoy the rest of the day see you Mikhail. catch up wonderful wasn't that fabulous that um, was so amazing like what a talent yeah and just watching um midnight just slowly appear before your eyes it's so relaxing i know I the hours. I just know. all the lines just slowly appearing and he just did it out of his head because he was like oh, i don't even know what i'm yeah. gonna draw oh yeah it's moon Knight. okay what yeah everybody else is like oh Nate google how do you get that arm to do this <laughs> and, and and the thing about like the dynamic aspects of it how do you mm. get that kind of movement an energy into the picture yeah he's so talented so talented